What's up guys, this is uh, Tariq from uh, smartbiketrainers.com and this is the Kicker Climb. Before you go and buy yourself one, uh, make sure you understand that the Kicker Climb is only compatible with Wahoo uh, brand trainers. So it is compatible with the Wahoo Kicker uh, 2017 or later, so 2017 and 2018. And it's also compatible with the Kicker Core that they introduced uh, last month uh, to your bike and uh, also compatible with the Kicker Snap 2017 model. And the reason for that, when using the Kicker Climb, the bike rotate around the rear wheel hub and the rear dropout attachment points uh, on the new 2017 Kicker and the Kicker Snap and Kicker Core models were specifically designed to accommodate this type of rotation. Uh, previous Wahoo trainers don't have that freedom of motion necessary to rotate as needed and other brands uh, like the tax or elite do not support that kind of rotation as well So when using the kicker climb with older model or when using the kicker climb with a different type of tr uh, brands uh, You might damage your bike frame or you might damage the trainer itself So be aware of that and there's also a software side to it uh, the kicker climb connects directly to the trainer itself, not the software. And as the trainer uh, receive data from software like Zwift, for example, receive gradient data, the kickers will forward that data to the climb and the climb will adjust the uh, elevation based on that information it received from the trainer. Before we unbox it, let's talk a little bit about the specs. Uh, the kicker climb uh, supports ascents up to 20% and supports descent um, up to minus 10%. It also supports quick release uh, front wheel forks and 12 by 100, 15 by 100, and 15 by 110 through axle. And all these attachments are included in the box as well. So let's go ahead and unbox it and take a look at and see what's inside and set it up and get it going. So here's everything in the box. You got we got the uh, kicker, we got the uh, power supply, and all the axle end caps here, and a quick release. So I'm just gonna attach the quick release uh, to my bike. As far as setup, uh, first you need to uh, plug in the kicker your Wahoo trainer kicker and the climb to a power outlet. And then grab that remote control and press and hold the center lock button uh, on the kicker climb uh, for about three seconds until the center white LED flashes steadily. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is uh, open the uh, Wahoo uh, Fitness app and uh, make sure that the uh, everything is updated, the firmware is updated and everything is good. And uh, also uh, take a look at your bike setting. Uh, select the uh, top of bike you have. So we have a 700C uh, road bike. This is a wheel size. So the kicker climb has two different modes. Uh, the first mode or by default when you turn it on, it will go into the lock mode, meaning you can only control it by pressing the up and down arrow on the remote control. Uh, if you press on the center button, it will turn into uh, free mode, meaning it will allow a, a third party application uh, or device to control the climb. So I took the kicker climb for a ride, for a few rides on Zwift and I have been actually using it for over a month now. On earlier versions, there was a little bit of a delay, about a second or two delay. Uh, but since then, Wahoo released two different uh, firmware updates to the kicker climb. And uh, on my uh, latest test for the past month or so, it's been spot on. So I took the climb up on the Epic KOM uh, climb and uh, there, uh, there are just a lot of up and down in that climb. So it, I thought it was a perfect uh, simulation uh, for the climb and uh, you can see the response uh, I'm gonna put him side by side here and you can see the climb was responding to gradient changes pretty quickly And the cool thing about the climb, once you uh, are in the ride and, and just get used to that motion a little bit, uh, you will get immersed. The biggest difference I notice when it's going down, especially going down a hill, 
I noticed myself going down on the drop a lot more, uh, and uh, I, th I thought that was uh, kind of interesting. Okay, what about custom workouts? I did take the climb on a lot of Zwift custom workouts and train road custom workouts. The difference when you are in a custom workout mode, uh, the climb is not gonna respond. Uh, if you're in erg mode, the climb will not respond to gradient changes. And that was what I was expecting. And I kind of didn't want it to do that when I'm in custom workout. However, if you want to change the gradient on the climb, uh, there are two ways you can do that. On Zwift, if you disable erg mode within the uh, Zwift companion app, uh, you will see slope mode and uh, when you adjust that uh, slope mode by pressing the up and down arrow the climb will adjust and uh, it will just lock you there if you go back to erg mode uh, the other way to do it is by using the remote control uh, you can just put it on lock mode and just adjust the gradient if you want to simulate a long climb for example through uh, one of your intervals and for training road uh, if you are using training road with the climb Train road will adjust gradient uh, starting at 75% of your FTP. So it is, it is FTP based. Uh, so 75% FTP is 1% uh, slope. And then it goes up 5% increase in FTP it will go up 1%. So 75% is 1%, 80% of your FTP is 2% uh, gradient, all the way up to, uh, I believe, 175% of your FTP. That will take you all the way up to 20% gradient. There is no negative slope in trainer road, so you're not going to be able to simulate downhills on with uh, trainer road. So a couple of things about the kicker climb: uh, noise. Now it might sound noisy when it's mo when it moves up and down, but you really is not you're not going to notice it. My Wahoo Kicker uh, 2017 model was a lot noisier, and when it's moving up and down, it moves in very small increment, and you're not you're barely going to notice it. The other thing is the Kicker climb uh, when it's moving, you might feel a very slight vibration. It didn't bother me as much, but you will feel that it is moving. Also, it would have been nice if Wahoo uh, made some kind of a special storage compartment for all these uh, front uh, fork uh, uh, end caps. And th that might be an issue if you have multiple bikes that you want to use with a climb. Uh, otherwise, just keep them in the box and uh, forget about them. And finally, uh, it will be interesting to see if Wahoo opens it up for other trainer manufacturers to uh, make trainers that are compatible with the climb. That will open up the market for them and they will just make them sell a lot more. So I have been using the client for about a month or so right now, and I gotta say, it is a lot of fun. Uh, I was skeptical at the beginning, but the more I used it and the more I got used to it, I started to enjoy it. It is a premium product, uh, it costs $600, and on top of that, you need to purchase a compatible trainer. Uh, so it can cost you, for this setup, it can cost you uh, from $1,200, depending on what, which trainer you uh, go with, so from $1,200 all the way up to $1,800. I say if you mostly train indoor and like to free ride on Zwift or any other app that simulate real courses like full gas, I say this is a good addition uh, to your pain cave. However, if you do mostly a uh, structured workout, then you might not benefit as much from the climb. Unless you do uh, climb specific sets, uh, then you might want to uh, take a look at it. Hope you find this review helpful and if you did please hit that like button and also consider subscribing. Also make sure you check out the full review of the kicker climb on smartbiketrainers.com and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!